Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Prime News. Before we jump right into the news, I want to let you guys know we are giving away a Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle through the Glean.io link down in the description. Absolutely free to enter. When we hit 50,000 subscribers, we'll announce the giveaway. And heck, let's see if we can get today's episode of Prime News to 200 likes. If we can pull off 200 likes, we will give away a $5 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card during tomorrow's episode. Just for you guys. That being said... Let's get right into the news. Over the past dozen hours or so, there have been a couple Dragon Quest XI-S related streams coming out of Japan, and these streams have unveiled a bunch of new details for the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI, which is shaping up to be the best version of Dragon Quest XI. Pretty interesting. Now, let's get into some more details on this game. So party members are going to be following you on the field. You can talk directly to party members without opening the menu. You can change the music from orchestra to synthesizer, which we've known for a while, but we now know you do it through the sound settings in the menu. You can dash with the ZR button. By using the new horse bell item, you can call your horse at any time. You can now gain experience points when your horse knocks away an enemy on the field. You can change the battle speed to normal, fast, or really fast. The quest from the 3DS version of Dragon Quest XI, in which you visit the worlds of the past, are, well, included in this game. Dragon Quest titles will be included in the Switch version, but not without changes. The following is actually a message from Dragon Quest series creator Yuji Hori, who couldn't appear to the program due to his poor health. And he had this to say, Thanks to everyone who made their voice heard, Dragon Quest XI-S is being made to dive deeper into the story, and the new story is also being added that allows you to experience each character as the protagonist. Through the unexpected sides of these characters and previously untold stories, I hope that you can be able to appreciate each character even more. I wanted everyone to further enjoy the drama of those characters, so I am actually making something as additional downloadable content. That something is a voice drama. I would like to share more details now, but I should be able to share new information in June. Now, in addition to all of that, and I hope you're actually enjoying a little bit of the Dragon Quest XI-S footage we got to show you. It's one of the first times we've seen the game running on Switch. Is that they've also made changes to how party chat works. For those who don't know, party chat in Dragon Quest XI has been kind of a mess. Uh, in prior Dragon Quest games, you would just talk to the people that are in your party as you're doing things. So you could talk to them while you're running on the overworld, or whatever the case may be, and it doesn't really interrupt the action. Well, for some reason in Dragon Quest XI, they took all of that and put it in a menu so now you had to essentially pause the game go to a menu to chat with your party members you do not have to do that anymore in this version of dragon quest 11 they have put it back to the way dragon quest used to do it which should be a welcome change to those people that were super annoyed with having to stop the action just to hold a little conversation kind of reminds me of when like navi would just purposely interrupt you in ocarina of time but then there's also times where like navi just lets you know she has something to say and you can just keep doing your thing i i prefer when the action doesn't stop unless it's a critical cutscene moment which obviously you know you're going to take me out so you can show me what's going on that being said dragon quest 11 s is arriving later this year i can't wait to dive into it it will be my first ever Dragon Quest game, so I'm pretty excited about that, and it appears with all of these changes, it might be the best Dragon Quest game. Uh, but that's a bold statement from someone who's never actually played a Dragon Quest game, so it'll be interesting approaching that from a fresh perspective of a Nintendo gamer in his 30s. Yoshi's Crafted World arrives later this week on Friday, and what's interesting is that we now have reviews as the review embargo is up. Now, I'm not going to dive into the nitty-gritty details of each individual review because I'm not actually going to read the reviews. I am going to do my own review of Yoshi's Crafted World to arrive early, you know, hopefully next week or so. That being said, uh, the review scores are actually pretty damn good. Metacritic is showing an 81, at least at the time of recording. And Open Critic, another Agarit site, is showing it as an 80. To give you an idea of how this compares to maybe another game people have closely tied this to in Kirby Star Allies, Kirby Star Allies has a Metacritic rating of 73 and on Open Critic down at 72. Essentially, Kirby Star Allies is sitting in the low 70s where it appears that Yoshi's Crafted World, at least so far, with like 40 or so reviews done that are being counted by each publication, 
sitting in the low 80s. You know, might be end up being high 70s. But the point is that Yoshi's Crafted World is definitely looking like a much more high quality and highly polished game in comparison to Kirby Star Allies. Now again, I haven't played any more than the demo and I got a good impression from the demo that this was something that was definitely a step above what Kirby Star Allies did. And uh, the worlds look beautiful. I can't wait to enjoy more of this game. We've seen some extra content from certain YouTubers. Obviously we've seen some stuff from reviews now. Uh, we had the IGN first series on Yoshi's Crafted World. It's definitely shaping up to be a surprisingly good game. I think a lot of people had very low expectations for this one. And uh, yeah, maybe you should keep those expectations until you play it yourself. But I'm personally excited. I'll be picking it up this Friday. And uh, I can't wait to not only play this game uh, on a stream with you guys, but to also drop my review next week. I'm hoping it can live up to my expectations, which are just for me to have a lot of fun with it. Again, I really enjoyed Kirby Star Allies a lot more than some other people. But even I can admit, obviously, that it's not quite up to standard with certain other games we've gotten on the platform, especially when I played Kirby Star Allies around the time that I was playing Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze all over again on Switch, and that game is platforming excellent. So in comparison to that, it definitely felt like a lot sillier version of a platformer, but uh, Yoshi's Crafted World is apparently, what I'm told, more than a collectathon. So uh, I'm very interested to dive into it and see what it's like. Ubisoft has officially announced that they are having an E3 press conference on June 10th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is awesome, and it was presumed that they would be doing this. Obviously, people always worry after Sony dropped out, would other companies start dropping out? EA is not going to do a traditional press conference, or even a digital one per se. They're just going to kind of do like a Nintendo Treehouse thing, where they just announce things over the course of a longer live stream period over multiple days. But, uh, yeah, they're still doing a traditional press conference. It'll be interesting to see what they have to bring. Ubisoft, to me, is always one of the most interesting press conferences that exist at E3. Because every single year, at least lately, it feels like they announce a brand new IP. I mean, if you think about the stuff we've gotten just, you know, over the past handful of years between, you know, Watch Dogs and The Division and For Honor. I mean, they just keep coming out with, I guess, I don't know, is, is bangers? Is that the term that kids use these days? Bangers? I don't know. They keep coming out with these brand new concepts for games that are very, very interesting, and I can't wait to see more. I think there's actually a pirate game they're working on that seems to be based on the Assassin's Creed stuff as well that uh, I don't think that's out yet. Maybe it... No, no, I'm pretty sure that's not out yet. So uh, that'll be pretty interesting to see as well. I'm really... Like, interested in Ubisoft games in general. Heck, maybe we'll get a Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 announced for us Switch people out there. I don't know, but I'm excited. And Ubisoft obviously has been supporting Nintendo to a point, so maybe we'll see some of these announcements also come to Switch. So, yeah, let's let's go. Wolfenstein Youngblood is coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC all on the same day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah, I, I couldn't use the music for copyright reasons. Anyways, the point is that it is arriving on July 26th, and it is awesome as a Switch owner to finally get a Wolfenstein game day and date. Obviously, uh, Wolfenstein 2, The New Order, that came well after the original release of the game, Doom 2016. Obviously, Switch wasn't around in 2016, so it came a year later. Uh, I'm pretty pumped about this, and I'm hoping this means we're going to get more of these kind of games coming to Switch with day and date, along with your know, Mortal Kombat 11, which is still, as of right now, day and date for Switch here in the United States. Next month i want more announcements like this this is great news the game looks fantastic if you like you know wolfenstein games you're probably gonna like this one um, killing those nazis and trying to save everyone because that's just what you do so i'm pretty excited hope you're excited too uh, if you want to actually check out the trailer you can kind of watch my news video on this i did earlier today which has the trailer in it uh pretty exciting stuff borderlands has been teased well, I mean, what else is new? We already know there was like a Borderlands thing potentially teased for Nintendo Switch. But it appears that Gearbox is teasing a potential Borderlands 3? Not really sure. It definitely is a new Borderlands game, whatever that might be. And uh, they're teasing it because tomorrow they actually have like a little presentation going on and uh, at 1 p.m. at Central Standard Time. And they're already going to be announcing a whole bunch of different stuff uh, that they've been teasing over time, including the likely Borderlands port for Nintendo Switch. Uh, but a brand new Borderlands game appears to potentially be being unveiled tomorrow. So you might want to stay tuned uh, to my channel because if it ends up coming to Switch, you know we're going to have a video on it right away. Otherwise, we'll get it talked about on tomorrow's episode of Prime News. So 
So I'm pretty stoked uh, to see what they're doing with Borderlands 3 or whatever Borderlands it is. Well, if it ends up being Borderlands VR, I, I don't even know what I'll what, what I do then. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, let's just go to the next story. So there's not much to this story. Um, I'm only bringing it up because I think it's rather significant. Final Fantasy VII is now available as of today on Nintendo Switch. Uh, pretty neat. Go to the eShop, pick it up if you haven't played it. I've actually never played Final Fantasy VII. Not sure if I'm going to pick this one up. I'm kind of waiting for the remastered version that might never be completed. But uh, yeah, it's neat because Final Fantasy VII was kind of that earmark game when Square Enix stopped supporting Nintendo and fully dove into PlayStation back in the day. It was kind of one of the you know starting points of the console war between PlayStation and Nintendo back in the day, uh, right after Sega started fading away. So I think this is really interesting to finally see this game on a Nintendo platform. Obviously, we've already gotten some other games like Final Fantasy IX and such on Switch, so we're already seeing a lot of the Final Fantasy games that weren't on Nintendo platforms coming over, but it's still really nice to see Final Fantasy VII, the original version anyways, Finally on Switch. I would love to get the remastered version someday. Uh, at all, period, at this point. I was going to say on Switch, but honestly, we just need it. Or, I don't know, I guess need isn't really... We don't need anything. But I strongly desire it. And this last story is a bit of a strange one, but might signify some stuff for the future of PlayStation and Sony. So, Sony will be no longer providing digital download codes of games to retail outlets. Now, that doesn't mean you won't be able to buy them from Amazon and stuff online, but in terms of retail outlets like GameStop and Walmart and all that stuff, where you have been able to go in and buy digital codes for games, you will no longer be able to do that with Sony games on PlayStation. This is an interesting point to me because this doesn't mean they're getting rid of physical games, but it means they are further pushing retail chains away from them. And I'm not sure what reason there is for that to exist other than them potentially pushing a new service or a new something they might be launching with PlayStation 5. I'm not, again, I don't understand. It costs them nothing to provide these codes, uh, but hey, Sony's doing it. Uh, thankfully, Nintendo hasn't done it yet, because one, one, one really cool thing about when I buy games digitally uh, for Switch is because I'm a Power Up Rewards member, if the pricing is going to be the same at GameStop as it is on Switch, I actually double dip. I don't know how many of you guys do this, but you can use your Power Up Rewards points or Power Up Reward whatever card at GameStop. Buy the game for the same price you would buy it on the eShop. You get your points, by the way, for buying it from GameStop, so you get your digital currency for GameStop for discounts on future games. That's basically what I use them on. And then you could take that code, put it in your Switch, and still get the full gold points from Nintendo as well. So I think it's really cool how you could stack that if you're paying attention. Um, but if PlayStation has anything like that, obviously you can't do that anymore. Um, I wouldn't know. I haven't played on a PlayStation system since PlayStation 3, and I haven't turned out. I mean, you guys see the PlayStation 3 in the background of my videos. It's like right over there. Um, I haven't played PlayStation 3 in quite some time, so I might even I can't even remember what it was like going on their shop and purchasing things digitally. So I think the only digital game I even have on that system is Frogger. That's right. I bought Frogger. I can't help it, okay? I mean, that little frog hopping, hip hopping across the logs and trying not to get stomped by. I can't help it. There's just something about Frogger that just. It's a classic, right? It's like it's like Pong. It's like Pac Man. You just gotta have it. Anyways, folks, that's gonna do it for today's episode of Prab News. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to drop that like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next one.